Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another day that He has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. And thank Him for another Bible study here at New Beginnings Community Church. Thank God for you uh, logging on YouTube, following us on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Thank God for New Beginnings. The beginning to being present here on tonight while we conclude our series on the whole armor of God. This is the concluding night, concluding lesson. And we are still fighting this good fight of faith. Still holding on, still enduring. Mm -hmm. Still leaning on the everlasting arm. We're trusting in God. The more I look into the Word of God, the more uh, the more God becomes awesome. He did so much for us. Mm -hmm. Not only in our individual life, but He did so much for us as people, as a people, as His creation. Before we get into it tonight, whole armor of God, part three. Before we get into it, let's pray. Bow heads. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we just come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord God, for your patience, your long suffering towards us. Thank you for your unconditional love, your everlasting love, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your spirit that comforts our heart and our mind. We thank you for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. For the remitting of our sins, Lord God, and for the salvation, Lord, we just ask that you would move in this service on tonight according to thine will, and we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The whole armor of God, part three, conclusion, however you want to say it. Focus verse back to Ephesians, the sixth chapter. Tonight we'll read verse 11 and verse 17. They'll get it started. And then we'll go on from there. Ephesians 6 and 11 says, Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And that's what we want to reiterate that is our focus tonight putting on the whole armor of God that we're able to stand against the wiles of the devil, according to the word. 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And so that's what we're dealing with tonight. The last two articles or components of the armor of God, there were six of them. We did two each session. And so the last two, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word. Salvation and the word, what we're dealing with tonight. Understanding, we discovered that this is spiritual armor mm -hmm. because in our prior scriptures, we found out that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, spiritual uh, wickedness in high places, uh, the rulers of darkness in this world. So we understand that this is spiritual warfare. So we have to put on the whole armor of God spiritually. The parable is the vision of a soldier. It gives us a visual of a, of a natural soldier. Mm -hmm. But our weapons are the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So, uh, 17 says, take and take the helmet of salvation. Helmet is any of uh, various protective head coverings, usually made of a hard material to resist impact. 
to resist impact. Mm -hmm. Scripture says, take the helmet of salvation. The helmet is designed to help resist impact, to, uh, <laughs> to minimize the head damage, so to speak. Sword, a weapon uh, consisting typically of a long, straight, or slightly curved pointed blade having one or two cutting edges and set into a hilt sword. That's our description for sword. And then salvation, our description for salvation is deliverance, aid to make safe, free, liberty, mm -hmm. rescue, renewal, and restoration. So verse 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Isaiah uh, chapter 59 and verse uh, 16 and 17. And I'll be reading from the King James Life of Custom. You follow in your version. Isaiah 59 and 16 says, And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and as and, and helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. This is talking about our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Like I said at the beginning, the more I look into the word of God, the more God becomes amazing, the more he, be he becomes awesome. And I just want to reiterate it, or, or make the statement that Jesus is the God of salvation. This is, so, this is why it's so important to put on the whole armor. Because the Lord uh and he saw, verse 16, that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him. Sacrifices, uh, I, he desired not, but he prepared himself a body. Prepared himself a body. And I like it. I mean, I don't like it, but it's interesting to where he said he, he, he saw that there was no man. That there was no man. And not only was there no man and wondered, wondered at the, and he was amazed, so to speak, at the fact that there was no intercessor. As, as creation, we were just not concerned about God and nor righteousness. And so his, his own arm, he, had, he himself had to bring salvation. What is salvation? He himself had to deliver us, had to rescue us, yes. had to restore us, had to uh, re, re the renewal of our relationship. He himself had to do this. This is an awesome guy we're talking about. Yes. He said, I saw no man, and, and I wondered that there was no intercessor. We, Bible said, we all going straight like sheep. Mm -hmm. We, there was, nobody was concerned about the things of God. And now all of a sudden, uh, you know, we've been, we 
Now all of a sudden we put on the helmet of salvation. We have salvation. Now all of a sudden it's about man. <laughs> Woo! Jesus is the God of salvation. And the the long the the, the long suffering, the forbearance, and the goodness of God needed you to repentance. Yes. God is still by his own arm delivering peace. He's still rescuing people. He's still saving people. He is still setting the captive free by the, the power of his own arm. By his Christ, by his 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 servant, and so First uh, Thessalonians five eight nine verse eight says, "For let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation." Verse nine. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is the God of salvation. There's no other way to put that. That's, that's the word of God. He's a, he's, a, he's a God of our salvation. Paul is talking to the, to the Thessalonians. He's talking to the church. Those of us that have been baptized in Jesus' name, those of us that have been filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give utterance. We are not, uh, we, the Bible says we haven't been uh, appointed to wrath, but to obtain salvation. So we not, we're not fighting salvation. We're not fighting salvation. The church, Thessalonian church, the church, we're not fighting salvation. He said, but let us who are of the day be sober. Let us be. Let us be uh, sober-minded. Let us. Let us. Be, let us have an understanding that we were appointed to salvation. God's own arm brought us salvation. We're not. Uh, we're not fighting, or we're not. We're not earning. Trying to earn. Uh, we're not trying to earn salvation by debt or by merit. Uh, we were, those of us that have uh, been born again, we were appointed unto salvation. The new birth, the new birth brought you and I deliverance. The new birth, the arm of God, the spirit of God brought you and I into a place of renewal with him. This is why I say put on the helmet of salvation because the helmet is designed to uh, to resist impact. The Bible said the enemy cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. You put on the helmet of salvation. You put on this, the, uh, the your breastplate. You put on your shield. All this is designed to quench the fiery darts. All this is designed to minimize damage, impact, because we have to guard our mind. We can't allow the enemy to uh, overcome us, make us discouraged, talking to the body of Christ. We can't allow the enemy to make us think that some possible way we're going to have to earn heaven. He said, my own arm brought salvation. Now, those of us that are born again, he said, you are appointed to it. Mm -hmm. Chew on that for a while. But you have to guard your mind. You have to put the helmet on to guard your mind because everything, the enemy, the enemy is coming against you to make you think or, or to deceive you and I to make us think that we were appointed to wrath or that God is just sitting there waiting to destroy us or something like this. Isaiah, in Isaiah, it looked, it looked at like 
according to the word that we were, as humans, we were in pretty bad shape. We were in pretty bad shape. And at that point, he decided to uh, to bring salvation unto it. He decided salvation, once again, is deliverance. He, he decided to get, send us aid. He decided to rescue us. He decided to send his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world. You have to understand how important Jesus Christ is. He is the God. He's the Lord of our salvation. Yes. Mm. And when he died upon that cross, he told his father, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. All you and I uh, have to do at this point, the work that you and I have to do is to believe on him whom the Father has sent. Yes. We have to believe the word of God. We have to believe in Jesus Christ. We have to put on the helmet because the enemy coming, like I said, to steal, kill, and destroy. He don't want you, he don't want that seed that sown seed, he don't want it to fall on good ground. The Bible said it, it fell on several different types of ground. And several, a couple of descriptions it said, and they gladly received it, but then the enemy come in and swoop it away because it, it doesn't take root because of the ground it falls in. If it falls on rocky ground, the enemy comes and they, they, they gladly received it, but the enemy come in and swoop it up real fast because it can't take root in rocky ground. It has to fall in good, in good ground. This is why you have to put on your helmet because you have to uh, minimize the impact because the enemy, as sure as <laughs> you and I live today, the enemy is coming to steal it. He's coming to take your joy. He's coming to take your peace. He's coming to even set you and I at each other with the, with the nerve to say, you ain't saved, I ain't saved, you ain't saved. We got to get out. That's, the Bible said where there's envy and where there's strife, are ye not yet carnal? We got to get out of the carnal mind. Now for me to sit and tell y'all, you ain't saved. You just said, tell me I ain't saved. Mm. The Bible said, well, there's the envy and there's strife and all this type of stuff. It said, oh, we get carnal. We still carnal. That's, yeah. that's the mind of a carnal person. Jesus has done the work. He's already done the work. God has brought us salvation. All we have to do is repent of our sins. Moving on. 1 Peter 1, <coughs> verses 3 to 5, 3 through 5, but I'm going to read 5 in your hearing. Who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Let me, let me go there, because I, I, I like the way that reads. We're kept, we're kept by the power of God. We're kept by the power of God through faith. Ah, the body of Christ is kept by the power of God through faith. The church, ah, we're kept by the power of God through faith. Through faith. This is why we have to put on that helmet. We have to, we have to minimize the impact. Because we have to endure. We have to hold on. 1 Peter 1 uh, and 3 says, Blessed be the God, in my, yeah, 1 Peter 1 and 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and under undefiled and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last day. Ah, look, look, look at that. 
He said, uh, verse 3 said, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again. Go back to Isaiah. He said, my own arm brought salvation. Brought yes. salvation. What is salvation? Salvation is being rescued. Being re, uh, the renewal, being renewed. Our renewed relationship. Being restored. It's restoration. It's deliverance. He said he has uh, begotten us again unto a lively hope. To a lively hope. To a lively hope. Mm. A lively hope, not a dead hope. Amen. A lively hope. Uh, he said, by, to a lively hope or a living hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Thank God for Jesus Christ. He is the, the Lord of our salvation. And what we have to do is believe on him according to his word. Yes. Repent of our sins and be baptized in Jesus' name because we we have to we have to put on the whole armor. We have to be washed. Yes. Paul is letting them know, I mean Peter here is letting them know this is not guesswork. He's let he's telling them what verse said to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, for, for myself, you and I. It's reserved in heaven for us. We have to hold on. We have to put on this whole armor, and we have to endure until the end. And so, uh, that did, that's that's salvation. The first half of a uh, the 17th verse. The second half where it said, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Isaiah 49 and verse 2. Isaiah 49 and verse 2 says, and he has made my mouth like a sharp, a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand as he hid me and made me a polished shaft in his quiver as he hid me. Mm -hmm. Look at, look at, look at this. Look at, look at, look at God. Look at God. Look how awesome God is. Jesus Christ was manifested at the appointed time for your salvation and my salvation. Mm -hmm. Look at God. And the description, the writer says, he has made my mouth like a sharp swore in the shadow of his hand has he hid me in the shadow of his hand he had he hid Jesus Jesus was not manifested until his appointed time and he said he hid and he said and made me a polished shaft made me a polished shaft in his quiver has he hid me his quiver a quiver is a thing that carries the arrows. He made him a polished shaft, like an arrow, and he hid him in the quiver, had him in the quiver, had him on his back, so to speak, a polished shaft, arrow, hid him until he brought him out, doop, shot him forth, until he brought him forth. Yes. And he put, he said he put the word, he said it made my mouth like a sharp sword, sharp sword. The word, it's all about the word of God, mm -hmm. about the word of God. We we should not, uh, should not doubt, and we definitely should not, uh, we shouldn't doubt the word of God. We shouldn't doubt the word of God. That's Isaiah. Uh, that was Isaiah 40, 40, uh, mm -hmm. 49 and 2. Look at Isaiah 49 and 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from far. The Lord has called me from the womb, from the bowels of, of my mother, hath he made mention of my name. We read verse 2, verse 3. And said unto me, Thou art my servant, 
O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught, and in vain, yet surely my judgment is with the Lord, and my work with my God. Verse 5. And now said the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him, through it, though Israel be not uh, gathered yet, shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Verse 6, and he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Boy, I can shout right there. <laughs> that thou mayest be my salvation Woo! unto the end of the earth. Talking about our great... Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Look how awesome God is. You got to put the whole armor of God. You got to put the word, you got to put this word on. This is how we're saved. It ain't, it, we're not saved by how we feel and what we think. No. Sit around and debate with each other about what we think. That, that's pointless. But I would say all that does is all that does lead it to strife. It doesn't gain nobody. It doesn't save nobody. It just brings more questions, more doubt. Not, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to believe the word. Amen. We're supposed to believe what the word says. Jesus is a savior. Yes. I've been saying that ever since I've been in the ministry. He came into this world a savior, and it ain't written nowhere else that he changed being a savior. <clears throat> Look at the what he said. I'm on. I'm on. I, I, he said here in Isaiah that he was gonna bring Jacob or bring is he was the uh, Jesus is gonna bring Jacob. And bring Israel back again. And we read over in Peter what he said he uh, brought us again to a, live, a lively hope. Over here he said in the sixth verse, he said, uh, not, not, he said to restore the preserve of Israel, I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles. Look at that. Not only to restore the remnant of Israel, but he's going to be a light for us Gentiles. You got to put on the whole armor. Amen. You got to put this on. And you got to put this word in your heart. Because the old, the old saying, if the old saying is, if I die and my soul be lost, nobody's fault but mine. Mm -hmm. You got to put this word on. Stop putting doubt in what you think and how you feel on. That's not going to get it. That's, that, that's, that leads to confusion. Yes. We're saved by grace. We're saved by the grace of God. His own arm brought salvation. It brought it. It brought us, it, it brought salvation. And when we obtained salvation, we were appointed unto eternal life. Not wrath. Understanding that he's talking to the church, he's talking to the believers. In other words, he's talking to an obedient people. Because we have to be obedient to his word and endure to the end. And then we have his promises. He's talking to an obedient people, a believing people. Yes. People that believe are obedient. People that don't believe are disobedient. The people that believe are obedient. Hebrews 4 and 12. Uh, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word of God is quick and powerful. 17th verse say, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is quick and powerful. Isaiah said, my mouth, he, he has made my mouth like a sharp sword. Uh, the word of God cuts, it'll cut a lion hair. <laughs> it'll cut down fear, it'll cut it down, it'll knock it down. But it's, you have to put on the whole armor. 
You have to put on the whole armor. You have to believe the word of God. Look what Luke said. Luke 4 and 32. He said, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. What is power? Power is authority. His word, his word, his word is uh, power. What's that, Luke 4 and 32? Luke 4 and 32. And, and, and put it in the, in the context. Luke 4 and 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. He's talking about some, he's talking about how the word of God, how the word of God has dealt with some unclean spirits. He's talking about the uh, dealing with the seven sons of Sceva and how I forget his name, but he went in and tried to uh, tried to rebuke the evil spirits in the name uh, of Jesus whom Paul preached. And, uh, and, the, and the spirits tore him up. Where we, where we at? That's okay. Huh? With the seven sons of Sceva? Yeah. Okay. Well, well, I'm at Luke 4 and 32. Yeah, let me get over here on the right side. Come on. Luke 4, 31 says, And he came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught, taught them on the Sabbath day. In 32, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit, I mean, uh, which, had, which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Look how powerful the word is. Luke 4 and 32 says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power, with authority. His word has so much authority that the unclean spirit spoke to him and asked, said, leave us alone. What do we have? What do, what do we have? And Jesus had to rebuke him and say, hold our peace. Come out from him. And when the devils had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, what a word. Is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits, and they came out. And the fame of him went out into every place in the country round about. I, I got my scriptures confused. Yeah, I right. thought this was the seven sons of the ski. That's an act. Huh? That's an act. Right, that's an act. And I didn't put that on my paper, but I was over there. Ah, acts, yeah. But this one, uh, Luke 4 and 32, and it says, And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. This is why you and I are urged to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Why? Because the helmet of salvation uh, Lightens the impact because the enemy is throwing darts, always throwing darts. And so we are we have on the breastplate, our loins are girded up, we have the shield of faith, we have on the helmet, and we have a sword. Now everything but the sword is defensive. The sword is offensive. The sword is what cuts, knock down, rebukes, whatever. Boom. Acts 19. Huh? Acts 19. Yeah, thank you. 
And so this is why it's important to put on the whole armor, the whole armor, the whole armor of God. Because when you put on the whole armor of God, you have the authority, you, you are protected by the authority of God. You're protected by the authority of God. You remember at the you remember at the wedding feast when there was a, a man in there, he didn't have on the wedding garment. And uh, the Lord said, you know, bind him up hand and foot and cast him out because he didn't have on the wedding garment. It was custom back then that when you were invited to the wedding, right. that you had to put on the, the, the wedding garments to, to be in the in the ceremony or whatever. And he was in there, but he didn't have a wedding garment on. And so they bound his hand and foot, cast him out. It's important for you and I to put on the whole armor of God. Because without the whole armor of God, uh, the enemy, the enemy can destroy us. But with the with the armor of God, mm -hmm. with the armor of God, he can't. Understanding uh we are warring or we are battling against principalities. We're not battling against flesh. We're warring, battling against principalities. So we have to have the armor on. We have to have the whole armor of God. Yes. Because the uh the word, the word is the is the power, is the authority. And it had so much authority and so much power that the the evil spirit uh, spoke out, just exposed itself, came on out. Well, what do you mean? Well, what does that have to do with me? You remember when the uh, the man was the, the possessed man, and the Lord asked him, "What's thy name?" He said, "Legion." Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was about two thousand of them, and he commanded that. To he commanded that they come out, mm -hmm. the word come out. It takes the word to fight the principalities and spirits, <clears throat> what possess. It takes the word of God to destroy or to fight what possesses your mind, your spirit. You have to understand it's not carnal, it's spiritual. And it takes the word to loosen. What, what has your mind kept. So you have to speak the word. Uh, Satan tempted Jesus three different times, took him on three different levels. And each time, it took the word. Yes. It took the word. And then it said Satan left for a season, and then the angels came and ministered unto Jesus, strengthened him. Same with you and I. Uh, the Bible said after you have suffered a while, mm -hmm. then it will strengthen you. It will settle you. It will establish you. It will make you perfect. But you're gonna have to, you're gonna, you know, we're gonna have to go through it, but we have to, we have to put the armor on. And after after our uh, constant, after our trial time, then the angels will come and minister and strengthen us. Because he said he he uh, every son that he loved and every son that he received he chastened, yeah. and so because of uh, he wants us to be according to his word partakers of uh, he wants us to be partakers of his righteous fruit of, of the righteous fruit because it that's what suffering does it yielded righteous fruit. And so, as we conclude tonight, the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Put on the helmet of salvation and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Have your loins girded about with truth and your breastplate of righteousness. And above all, take the shield of faith. Like we always encourage you to repent, be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. Allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give us. Before we let you go, let us pray. We bow here. The gracious and heavenly Father, in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we come tonight. Thank you once again for the visitation. 
Have your spirit and your word, Lord God. We pray that you will continue to be the Lord of our lives. Lead us and guide us. Keep us under your protection, Lord God. Keep your shield of protection about us, Lord God. We just thank you for your salvation that you brought. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for having all power and authority. And we just praise you and glorify you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus amen. Name. amen. amen.